So I want to use this section to generate a belt. I'm going to select these two edges, edge ring, choose faces. Now I can clone, apply, no. Select all the faces. And we'll create a shell from it. So I'll hit escape. And escape one more time. So I'll scroll down to the entire mesh section and click subdivide. With that subdivided, I'm going to move back to the sculpt workspace. And I'm going to go to the main body layer. I'm going to unhide everything. Unhide all. If you want, from the geometry menu, you can separate the hidden into its own layer, or you could delete what's hidden. The next step is I'm going to bring that belt object into the sculpt workspace. Geometry, retopple mesh to sculpt mesh. And if you anticipate having to use this quite often, you may want to go ahead and assign a hotkey, which I find myself using it more and more, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do at this point is hit the end key while I'm hovering over this. That's going to allow me to assign it. So let's choose R for retopple mesh to sculpt mesh. If something is already assigned to it, 3D Coat will notify you and, and allow you to decide what you want to do from there. So, yeah. Now let's hit our little hotkey. Easy enough. Okay. Now, um, I may smooth that a time or two. Okay, so let me switch that to voxel mode. Click and choose extrude. Let's try point four. Okay. All right. So with that done, let's go ahead and choose this parent layer. And you'll notice when I created that, 3D Coat adopted the name of this object and renamed the parent. So I'm gonna change that. It doesn't really matter that much, but let's just name it Body Collision. Now let's go to the Cloth Tool. Let's go back to the Retopple Room. Hide this belt. I'm going to double click and name that and save it into the Retopple Models palette. and drag and drop that in hide it unhide the pants sculpt room pick from the topo and look at our settings I want to go with maybe 0.5 and I'm also going to scale my brush up ahead of time choose a different brush alpha so I think we're ready to start. So while that's calculating, I'm going to go ahead and just pull the cloth away in a couple areas just like I did previously. You can see how that belt is keeping it pinned at the very top here, and that's what I want. So let's pull it away up here and see if it will create a few wrinkles. Okay, so let's click in sim. We can subdivide. Let 
overall it looks pretty good we could go with that and just sculpt whatever else we would like to add to it yeah so let's go ahead and commit this to a layer so let's create a new layer here and I'm going to give it a few subdivisions let's hit the enter key The cloth thickness is a bit much, so I'm going to clear it by clicking this little X icon here. And let's adjust our cloth thickness to 0.6. And hit enter. Okay, that's about right. And I can change it to surface mode hide the body collision layer I'm gonna go ahead and tweak this a little bit and come back when I'm finished so stay tuned alright so I finished all the sculpting edits by using standard brushes like the build-up brush to accentuate the wrinkles or the folds as I thought was needed and I used the pinch brush to help create seams and I created some pant loops as well with the curves tool I just click to create the points and then just selected the type of object that I needed from the splines palette. So I'll step out of that. And let me go to the shaders panel. Right click. You can see in this panel that a normal map was used for modulating texture. And you can adjust the overall texture scale and the bump level as well as cavity and bulging and okay the last thing I want to point out is when you are using the cloth tool let me go to the retopo workspace and let's say you have your basic low poly mesh that you bring into the sculpt workspace for this particular purpose and you choose pick from retopo. I'm going to hide the pants in the box true layer panel so we can see this a bit better. But let's say you subdivide, let's say 0.4, 1, okay. Stick to current object and then start. Choose in sim. If you click to retopo, it's probably going to place a copy of that on the very same layer. In this case, I just wanted to replace this particular mesh. So, in order to be able to get back to this state, if you want, you can always drag and drop that into the retopo models palette. That way, you can always access it quickly if you need. So, I'm going to clear this mesh from this layer. Let's go back to the sculpt room and I'm going to choose to retopo. It's going to try and place it back on the same layer and now I have this subdivided version which I can use for baking purposes if I want later on. So just wanted to point out how you might go about doing that so you don't have to re this all over again. So that's a quick look at the work that we've done in this particular series. Hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.